Hi everyone, I'm David Clark and I work at Microsoft on the Dynamics 365 field service team. Today I want to show you how easy it is to get up and running with field service. By the end of this video, within just 10 minutes, we will set up a field service trial, create and schedule a work order, and then view and complete the work order on the field service mobile app. Let's jump in. The first thing we need to do is create an environment that will give us a trial of Dynamics 365 field service. There are a few ways to do this, but I'm choosing to go to trials.dynamics.com. From there, I'm going to sign up for a trial for development purposes, and then continue signing up. First, enter your email address. Then enter information about yourself and your company. Enter your phone number and enter the verification code that is sent to you. Next, you need to create a business identity. I'm going to enter Contoso Coffee as the example business. Then I'm going to create a username and password and finally choose sign up. The last step is to choose get started and this will take us to the Power Platform environment. From here, we need to create an environment. As an example, I will name my environment Contoso Coffee Field Service, then choose Next. For the URL of my environment, I'm going to enter Contoso Coffee 20, making my URL contosocoffee20.crm.dynamics.com. Make sure to choose a unique one for yourself. You will want to make sure that Dynamics 365 apps are enabled. And below that, for automatically deploy these apps, choose an option that includes field service. In this example, I am choosing all enterprise applications and then save. In the background, the system will prepare your environment. Right now, the state is preparing instance. After a minute or so, the state will change to ready when your environment is created. Now that your environment is ready, the next step is to add users. Go to the menu and then admin. This will take you to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Then go to users in the left navigation. By creating the trial environment, we created one administrative user. Next, let's create another user that represents a frontline worker who will view and complete work orders with the mobile app. Select add user at the top. Enter a first and last name. In our example, we will enter Archie Boyle. Then enter a username and then create a password. Take note of the username and password that you created and then select next. Ensure your user is assigned a license that gives him or her access to field service. Select next. For optional settings, you can enter more information. As an example, we will enter an address for this user. This is optional, but recommended. Then select next again, and then close. We now have two users, one who will be a back office administrator and dispatcher, and another who will be the frontline worker. The next step is to assign the new frontline worker user to your trial environment. In the left navigation pane, go to admin centers, then the Power Apps admin center. Select and highlight your field service environment and choose settings in the top ribbon. Under users and permissions, select users, then select add user at the top. Find and select a frontline worker user you just created. In our example, it is Archie Boyle. Then select Add. You will then see two users added to this environment. Now that we have our trial environment and users set up, we are ready to open up the field service application and begin using it. From the Power Platform Admin Center, go to Environments and then select your field service environment 
and choose Open Environment in the top ribbon. Here you will land on the Field Service Get Started page. This is a great place to begin using Field Service and it will guide you through the core Field Service workflow of creating a frontline worker, account, work order, and then scheduling the work order. At the bottom of the page, you will find other resources like release notes and community forums. Let's start by setting up a frontline worker. For users, enter the frontline worker user you just created. In our example, it is Archie Boyle. If needed, you can enter multiple users to create multiple frontline workers at one time. Characteristics are skills and certifications that your frontline worker may possess. Add or create these as needed. Service territory is the geographic region your frontline worker operates in. Again, add or create this as needed. Select a time zone that your frontline worker primarily works in. Below that, enter the security role and field security profiles that should be granted to your frontline worker. These control what data the frontline workers have access to. It is recommended to use the default values that are pre-populated. The mobile offline profile will control what data is downloaded to the frontline worker's mobile app when he or she logs in later on. Again, it is recommended to use the one already populated. If you have email set up, your frontline workers can be sent an email encouraging them to download the mobile app. But for now, we will just choose Save and Close. Next, let's create an account. An account represents a customer who in this case may need on-site service from a frontline worker. If prompted, I encourage you to allow field service to use your location. To keep it simple, we will add a name of the customer and then a service address where the customer is located. In this example, we will say the customer is located on the Microsoft campus. You can add more information about this customer account later on. Then save and close. Next, let's create a work order. Work orders represent work that needs to be done, typically on-site at the customer's location. Let's imagine that AdventureWorks Coffee is having issues with their coffee machine, and we at Contoso Coffee can help them. For service account, enter the account you just created. For work order type, enter or select an existing value. A work order type is a high-level classification of the work, like in this case, we will choose Inspection. Then enter a summary of the work order. For price list, simply enter a default value or create a new one. Price lists control how much products and services sold to the customer will cost. In order to complete a work order, the frontline worker may need to complete a series of tasks or checklist items. Let's create a new one. As an example, the frontline worker may need to review and record diagnostic codes on the coffee machine, and this might take 45 minutes. Next, let's add products. Products are parts that may be used and billed to the customer. We may need to replace AdventureWorks coffee machine, so let's add that as a product. Enter a name of the product, then select Inventory for product type. Then enter a product ID. For unit group and default unit, select default unit and primary unit or something else based on your business needs. Then save and close. Next, let's add a service. This represents labor the frontline worker may perform as part of the work order to resolve the customer's issue. Let's create a new service called Standard Hourly Labor Charge. For product type, we will choose Service. Again, enter a product ID, unit group, and default unit. Then save and close. At this point, we have outlined a work order to inspect the coffee machine. Save and close the work order. The last step is to schedule the work order to the frontline worker. Select the Schedule button. This will take you to the schedule board. From here, we will toggle to the new schedule board. In the middle of the screen, we see our frontline worker that we created. In our example, it's Archie Boyle. Down below is the work order we also just created. Simply click and drag the work order 
and drop it onto the frontline worker schedule. Now that the work order is scheduled, the last step is to view it on the mobile app as a frontline worker. On your iOS or Android phone or tablet, go to your device's app store and search for Field Service Dynamics 365. Then download and open the app. Sign in with the username and password of the frontline worker user you set up and that you scheduled a work order to. This is different than the username and password used to log into the admin center on your laptop. Then select your app from the list. If you don't see your app, choose the menu icon in the top left, then select Show Non-Production Apps, then tap the Field Service Mobile app. Upon logging in, you will see the app begins downloading data in the background, assuming you are connected to the internet. Once the data is downloaded, you will be able to work in areas without internet connection. You are first taken to the booking calendar view. You should see the work order you just scheduled to your frontline worker. By tapping the work order, we can see more information like start time. In the customer tab, you can see the account name and address. In our example, it's AdventureWorks Coffee. In the service tab is the tasks, products, and services we added to the work order earlier. Frontline workers can tap the task to complete it or tap a service or product to mark it as used. And the Notes tab makes it easy to add text, photos, and videos to the work order. Back in the main menu, frontline workers can view lots of other information like their list of contacts, assets, IoT data, and time entries. So congratulations for setting up field service and successfully viewing work orders on the mobile app. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to field service, so take a look at the other exciting capabilities across scheduling, asset servicing, mixed reality, and IoT. Good luck and bye for now.